evening, party people. You might have seen me just for a hot moment kind of jive in behind the just starting screen. And I swear there was music playing when I put those headphones on. But as it turns out, it kind of went to a low point. We already seem to have some hype going on. It seems that there's a bit of excitement for Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. And trust me, trust me, it is equally mirrored on this time because I have been trying to, I've been trying to figure out how I want to do the, do a, a, a GameCube stream recently. I did one previously, like with super, uh, with a paper, uh, whoa, I can't even speak today. Let's restart for a second. Hold on. Hi there and good evening, everybody. My name's Cameron and I totally have my wits about me. After the stream, if you stick around after the cocktail session, we'll be playing some Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. It's a great game. It's awesome. And it's definitely something that I needed in my life because I need a little bit more. I need a little, uh, I need a little hype. I need a little pick-me-up every once in a while. Articulate, articulate. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue and all that other stuff. Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. I took theater classes once upon a time. I used to do theater when I was younger. Haven't done any of that recently because I just, I just haven't. I haven't found any particular thespian troops that I particularly vibe well with in its entirety or shows that I like really, really, really want to be in. If I had to, I guess if I had to pick a show to be in, what would I pick? What would I, what show would I pick? I really like the music from, let's see, I like Hamilton. Hamilton's cool, but I don't know if I want to star in Hamilton. I liked Avenue Q, but that's too much puppetry work. I'm not a big puppet guy. I don't know if I'd be very, very good at that. What other, what other music do I really like? Honestly, if there was a Disney movie-based play being put on, like Frozen or something like that, I feel like I would be totally into that. Because I do like art I do like Disney music every once in a while. And then again, I'm a little biased because Anna, my loving fiance, is a huge Disney nerd, aka the Disney queen, and she's probably been around here a little bit. That's great. Do you have the real GameCube disc of Thousand Year Door? I don't think I actually have it here with me. I'm emulating it for the purposes of this stream. I think it's at home at my parents' place. Although, I'm currently looking because the GameCube stuff is down here. I don't think I have it here. Oh, I got these ones. Of the GameCube discs that I actually have as I drop a, a very, very heavy Xbox 360. The actual GameCube discs that I have here, and this is not an exhaustive list, is Paper Mario. Uh, whoa, I, I can't get this whole paper thing out of my brain. I got Mario Party 5. I got Mario Party 6. I've got Pokemon Coliseum. I've got Chibi Robo, which I actually played Pokemon Coliseum. And I also had, I could have sworn I had, um, oh my God, what was it called? Oh my God, it's called Super Mario Sunshine. Yeah, cause I definitely had that. Cause I definitely, the only GameCube games that I've played are the ones that are on the discs, but emulation. Ooh, that's why emulation, the game kind of sucks. Yeah, it's not the, it's definitely not the best, but and I found that from when I, my previous experience of using the GameCube and kind of scaling that up to the HD resolution, it just didn't look, it, it wasn't really what I liked. And plus, I don't like the idea of, I'm not really good at like keeping my electronics up to snuff. So the idea of potentially all of the, um, all of the data on one of these memory cards kind of getting wiped was like, it scared me. I'm like, it's so easy to access via the computer. I'm a, I'm a PC kind of guy. If I can get it on a PC, I definitely will. I just love, I love having that control over like, everything so that's why i'm a bit of an emulation kind of guy plus like technically technically it could get good quality if there were proper modders out there and whatnot but alas anna likes her gamecube stuff so that's what we go with gwidney says the best way is using a wii with an hdmi adapter and a capture card that's a good point and i would except for the fact that my wii which i would go grab it's literally right down there but it's plugged in and i seem to have accidentally turned it on Whoops. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't output any color. For some reason, the Wii is so messed up that it doesn't output in anything but grayscale, and I don't exactly know why. And granted, I could just go onto the internet and buy myself a Wii and get the proper colors out of it and do the emulation and do the capture card. However, that's like, that's like one, two, three, four, five, six steps ahead, and this is what's easily accessible. And plus, like, I kind of spent at least a day over the weekend to make the overlay, so I'm gonna get as much mileage out of that that I possibly can. But before we get into GameCube time, it's cocktail time. And today's cocktail, I kind of just flipped through my books and was like, what the heck can I make with what I have readily available? And the first thing that I settled upon was not able to be made with what I had readily available. I actually ran to the liquor store literally right before that. I was like sprinting down the street to go get a bottle of port because uh, that's what this calls for. It calls for port. So I picked up port and I swear, I don't know what it was about the situation of me coming back from the liquor store, but there was something comical in my head about a scrawny gentleman kind of like, 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 um, 
kind of like speed walking down the street, not trying to run, look like he's getting anywhere with this like very clear brown bag of most definitely a liquor bottle of some sorts. Like I can only imagine the idea of the people of the, the, the ideas in the heads of the people that I must have scurried by. And I did run through, there's a, there's a restaurant right down the street and they have some of that outdoor seating. So I like, I like did my little speed walk thing right in between like the tables on the side because they were kind of, you know, surrounding the sidewalk. Anna, your phone's in here. She's trying to find her phone. That's what the thinking was for. But uh, I can only imagine what was going through their heads as me, small man with the with the brown bag liquor bottle. And then being like, now where the heck is this guy going? What the heck kind of hot date is he getting himself into? Well, I'll have you people know, we have a cocktail stream to do here and I just need this ingredient. And it's it's cheap. It's it's port, it's, it's port cherry Madeira. That stuff is apparently very cheap to get around here. I bought my bottle for about $7. I took the cheapest one that they had because this is about speed. Not quality. I just want to drink. And I want to do things. I want to play my game. I want to get in my game. Short cocktail so I can play my game. In any case, the cocktail that I have for y'all this lovely, lovely evening is from this book called Around the World in 80 Cocktails. I brought it up before and I picked it up for me while she was in Disney World. What a lovely, lovely gal she is. And there's so many different things in here. There are like different spirits that I don't even, I don't even know the names of. I know them because I can read them, but like I've never actually heard of them before. And at some point in time, when I finally have the week long session of reading through my cocktail books that I really want to have, I will be able to index through all of them and learn so much more and share those facts with the world. But alas, full-time jobs get in the way of that and also other hobbies and whatnot. And also the fact that I don't know if it's a diagnosable thing, but I literally can't like, I have a very hard time sitting down and doing one thing at a time, unless I'm like literally hyper fixating on it. Uh, air, uh, air, case in point, uh, I used to stream for like eight hours at a time. That was the norm. The norm was over six hours. I can't do that anymore. I actually have to sleep. Uh, speaking of sleeping, or the lack thereof, the cocktail this time around is called Coffee Cocktail, and it's on this page of the book, page uh, 27 and 26, and it's actually quite interesting. I saw this because I was like, oh my god, coffee? At like 9, 8 p.m.? What a great idea! Uh, and then I looked through the ingredients, and there's no mention of coffee in this cocktail recipe. So I'm gonna just... I'm gonna just read this page here. We're gonna get a little bit of background of coffee cocktail from Villanova de Gaia, Gaia, Portugal. Villanova de Gaia, Portugal. Coffee cocktail. England and Portugal have a long history of alliance. So when England went to war with France in the early 18th century, it was only natural that English merchants would look to Portugal for their wine needs. Thanks to very low duties on imported Portuguese wine, port wines from the Douro region became widely popular in England. Soon enough, the banks of the Douro River at Villanova de Gaia were studded with warehouses labeled with very English surnames such as Croft, Cockburn, Sandman, and Taylor. Taylor is actually, that's really funny because the port wine that I have is actually Taylor, New York. That's so funny. The wines that were shipped out of the Douro were fortified to protect them from, uh, from rigors of the sea voyage to London, but owing to growing demand, poor Douro wines were also adulterated with things like elderberries and sugar to improve their color and flavor, giving Douro wines a bad reputation. By 1756, the Douro wine industry was in crisis, and the Portuguese prime minister of the time, the Marquise de Pombal, took control of the situation by setting up the world's first wine regulation body, the Compagnia Geral de Agricultura das Vinhas do Alto Douro, which I'm gonna take a hot guess and say has something to do with regulating the spirits agriculturally. Oh, some corporation generally about the agriculture of wines and grapes alto duro i don't know what alto means i'm not, i don't speak portuguese unfortunately under its guidance of the compagnia geral de algo cultura das minhas do alto duro i'm not gonna try to say that again the wines of the Douro increased in quality and prestige. Douro winemakers started adding brandy early in the production process, thus preserving the grapes' natural sweetness. What we know, what we now think of as port wine, was born. The Compagnia Geral suffered an unusual fate. Its lodges were razed in 1833 during conflict between two contenders for the Portuguese throne. Over 20,000 pipes, around 1.1 million liters, or 290,000 gallons, of port flowed into the Douro, the river, turning the river purple. This setback for the industry was only temporary though. Heavily fortified, high quality port had already become firmly established as the favored tipple of England's upper classes. There was a small corpus of port-based classic cocktails, including this, 
the coffee cocktail, which famously doesn't contain coffee, but which, in the added, in the words of the anonymous editor who added it to the posthumous 1887 edition of Jerry Thomas's Bartender's Guide, looks like coffee when it has been properly concocted, and hence, probably its name. This implies one main thing. If I concoct this cocktail correctly, it will look like coffee. Seeing as I am a rather novice bartender myself, I'm not expecting anything more than a little frothy layer up on top that'll kind of look like, yeah, there's probably an egg in there that caused that sort of creme to form, which is accurate because it's made with an egg. And a couple other ingredients as well, which is a rather small list, but I'm looking forward to it. I literally don't know what this is going to taste like. So this recipe calls for an egg, not an egg white, not an egg yolk, an egg, a whole entire thing that you just like crack in your cocktail glass. It also calls for the port, which I described before that I just ran to the store and went to go grab for myself, as well as some brandy, which I also have down here as well, and some some nutmeg to wrap that all together. Um, and it's apparently very simple. You crack the egg, you whisk it, you add the ingredients, dry shake, wet shake, put it in, grate it. That's that's all it is. It looks like it's going to be incredibly simple. So it's gonna, I'm gonna get right into it. If things are a little short this time around, no problem. I really want to play Paper Mario. So I am not gonna linger any longer on this because I am very, very excited. So to create coffee cocktail, if I can keep my book open here on the couch, we need, well, the first thing we need is an egg in a cocktail shaker. So I'm gonna get my cocktail shaker, my strainer as well, interestingly enough. Get to, whoa, epic. So that recipe is basically egg coffee nog. I would agree with that, except for the fact that there's no coffee in it and there's no nog. Nog, I think would imply that there's gotta be some sort of cream or maybe a milk type thing. Nope, none of that, just egg. Coffee would also imply some sort of at least caffeination, maybe even cocoa, a type of bean, the coffee bean or the cocoa bean, but no, no, just egg and, and various other spirits and whatnot. So although I really, really want to agree, egg coffee nog, it's just egg and will forever be egg. Speaking of egg, the star of our show, the egg, not me, although maybe I am an egg, is sitting here right here in my little cooler over here in a in a little container. I asked Anna to help me set things up. So instead of just kind of placing the egg carton into this into the freezer, the freezer? The um Oh my god, what do you call that thing? Coleman Polylight 40. It's a cooler. That's the word for it. Great. She decided to put it in a little container. She's the smart one. She thought instead of putting an entire carton of eggs into a uh, cooler that's probably not going to be properly clean until a couple hours from now, I will give Cameron one egg because all he needs is one egg. Imitation coffee nog. If it looks, listen, if it looks like coffee and it smells like coffee, I'll agree with that. I had, actually the other day, we went out to a, a local deli and they were selling these little containers of coffee and it was just just coffee. No creamer, no sugar, no nothing like that. And I was like, oh my God, I got to try this. And it was probably one of the best coffees I've had from a can in my life. And I wish I remember what the name of it was, but it's recognizable because it had a rainbow llama on it or it might've been an alpaca. I'm not too good on the difference between my various different types of llama, alpaca, S. What was that, dear? Okay, Anna says it was an alpaca. I still think it was a llama, but then again, I have an inclination towards llamas because it's just fun to say. But alpaca, I guess, is a little bit cooler than that. I've heard alpaca fur is a little bit more, a little soft, a little more comfy, but I don't wear animals for the most part. I wear whatever the heck this is made out of, which is probably polyester, some kind of plastic, which would imply that it used to be a dinosaur. I don't wear living animals. I only wear extinct ones, which actually sounds even worse. Anyway, before I go down that rabbit hole a little bit more, this is my egg. This is my cocktail shaker. You would think that you'd shake. That comes later. I'm gonna crack an egg and just put it on the inside. And I'm gonna crack it. I thought that was gonna be really cool. I could do it in one fell swoop, but that's not gonna happen. Not very good on my egg crackage. One egg and a dear cocktail shaker. Sirs and her madams, you can hush down out there. We're trying to make a cocktail in here. Unfortunately, I don't have proper soundproofing in my bar like they do in the uh, other bars around the area. And by soundproofing, I just mean people who are a lot drunker than I speaking a lot louder than I am. So it makes it seem like I can't hear the road, despite the fact that the road is still very much screaming at me. I just can't hear it because of the other people screaming around me. This cocktail recipe says to whisk the egg in the cocktail shaker before we do anything else with it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have a choice here. I can either take the tiny whisk, which personally is my favorite whisk. I don't know where, oh, you know what? I remember why I got a tiny whisk. 
because I, I watched for a, for a while. I went on a binging with Babish binge, and he uses the tiny whisky, tiny whisks things, and it's the cutest little thing. Or I could use this big hulking boy. This Whoa. is what? Why it. are you screaming at me? You got it from a tiny like. No, I got the inspiration from the internet. We no, bought it somewhere not. else. You did not buy it. it came okay. In one of the secret Santas. We did not buy this. My fiance has corrected one. for me. It rusted over, and we threw it out before binging with Babby. Okay, well, apparently I have thrown out a rusty whisk. And to be perfectly honest, I don't want any bits of iron oxide in my egg. So I guess that kind of solves the that solves it there. In order to remember the rusty tiny whisk of the past, we have to use this tiny whisk to whisk the egg you mean on the you inside. Don't want the one that fell on the Nope, don't want to use the one that fell on the floor. Why not? There's an egg in here. Whisk. I'm gonna whisk it. Unfortunately, I, can you can you see this? Can you see the? I don't want to like drop the egg out. Let's see. Can we see egg? I don't want to drop egg on the floor. No drop egg on the floor. You can see the can you see the reflection? That's not working very well. Anyway, just take my word for it. I am most definitely whisking an egg. Wink. I don't know why I winked there. It wasn't supposed to be an innuendo or anything like that. There's nothing sexual or suggestive about whisking in an egg. Wink. Why did I wink again? Why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep doing uncomfortable little things? Anyway, um, after you've whisked the shit out of your egg, or at least satisfied with the whisking, which, um, eh, you know, I don't know if I'm satisfied with that yet. It's still a little bit there. What's the next ingredient? Where's the next ingredient? Let's, let's move on while we think about this. The next ingredient is the port. Um, I will grab the port. Port. Port on the table. We're gonna need two ounces or about 60 milliliters of the port that gets added to this glass after I'm done mutilating this unfertilized baby whatever. I'm guessing it was a chicken, unfortunately. But um, instead of being a chicken, it became, it will become a libation. And honestly, I, you know, if I had to go a certain way, I guess I'd rather be, I'd rather be, if I had to go a certain way, what's the proper tense here? Drink, drank, drunk. If I had to go a certain way, I'd rather be drunk. And by drunk, I don't mean intoxicated. I mean drunk is in like, to be imbibed by somebody else, I guess? I don't know, there's some, there's some weird thoughts happening on this show today. In any case, enough about that. More drinkage. We need two ounces of the port. This is a fresh port. It's by Taylor, New York. Established in 1880, a rich, Fruity taste and smooth finish make ruby red Taylor Port the perfect choice to pair with your favorite dessert. Apparently. Oh, there's a whole story in the back, too. Ah, oh, Taylor New York Port established 1880. Port, a rich, moderately sweet ruby red port, delicious with dessert or for an evening. Sipping, serve over ice or at room temperature with a twister with soda. The Taylor Wine Company, makers of superior ports, ports and sherries with a tradition dating back to 1880, skillfully blends the best grapes from New York to create a unique taste and depth of character. Taste the difference. Comments 1 800 487 3417, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. EST, www.taylordesserts.com. Produced and bottled by the Taylor Wine Company, Canandaigua, New York. I was doing so well until the end there. Anyway, two ounces, if y'all don't mind. Um, that's the that's the big end of my little measuring the jigger here. So let's see how that goes. Actually, I'm very curious. I've literally never bought this port before, so I'm actually curious of how it tastes. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a, a little bit of a taste test. Let me go grab my my snifter. Anytime I try new things, I was told I took a I took a wine tasting class once upon a time. I also took a beer tasting class once upon a time. These are a part of my, it wasn't a part of a degree or anything like that. It was an elective. I was a senior. I had, I did what I wanted to do. And my professor, Chef O'Neill, was like, if you're gonna try pretty much anything, like there are proper glasses to, to, to use for the occasion. I fell in love with the snifter glass, which I think is supposed to, usually they serve you like whiskeys to smell, but I just find that it works very well for pretty much anything I have in my collection. I don't have, I got plenty of glasses and it just kind of works for all of it. In any case, this is, this is the port. It's got a nice ruby red color to it. I completely agree with that. If I had to be bold, I am kind of shining it up to the light. It looks absolutely ruby, so I completely agree with that. But it's a, it's nice looking. It smells good too. Wow. Can can woo can Oh, you're from New York. Nice Sims Jeff. I appreciate that. Can 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 Adegua can Adegua. If y'all have any questions about the interesting names of the towns in New Jersey, I can attempt to help with that. I am a New Jersey native, although I am here in the great state, the city of Philadelphia, for now. Philadelphia. And if you're questioning about the river, it's Schuylkill, despite the fact that it's not spelled that way. It's, it's wacky. Try to, try to, try to spell Schuylkill and look that up on Google. You'll have a hard time, I think. 
In any case, this Taylor wine is very, very red. Taylor, Taylor Port wine is very, very red. It smells extremely like berries. Like I am getting so many dark fruits off of this. Naturally, as any sane person would say, because it's red, it definitely smells like cherries. Although to be perfectly honest, it's not as cherryful to me as it would be otherwise. I'm getting blackberries mostly. This smells straight up like the bottle of Chambord that I have over uh, on top of my cabinets and whatnot. It is just, it's beautiful. Plepstash, my boy, if you need help with Wisconsin names, he, he's got me, that's nice. Well, I mean, Hey, I don't know anything about Wisconsin aside from the cheese and the fact that one of my people from uh, high school actually went up there to become a pilot. It's his favorite state, I believe. Give me, uh, here, here's the challenge. Let's type a name from Wisconsin in chat and I'm gonna try to pronounce it and you can very well correct me. Or tell me that I did a pretty good job, maybe? I don't know. In any case, this poor wine smells like blackberries. It straight up smells like Chambord. What does it taste like though? Oh man, that's good. That tastes, it's not as, it's obviously not as alcoholic as Chambord. It's actually not as blackberry forward in, when you, uh, on the tongue. Uh, it's actually a little more, I call those cranberry. -y. I'm getting like slight cranberry. It's mostly grape. It's mostly what I imagine like grape juice to taste like. This, in my opinion, for the people out there who say wine is basically grape juice, this is the closest that I've gotten to actual grape juice tasting wine in my life so far. Or, although technically speaking, the wine at church was kind of grape juice tasting too, back when I did my catechism when I was a young, young boy. Although, I don't know why I was, I don't know why I have that association in my brain. Why would I be drinking wine? I was a minor. I was at church, who really cares? It doesn't matter. I'm looking forward to seeing what that tastes like combined with an entire egg. So we'll see, we'll see about that. So we have, we have a whole egg in the cocktail shaker right now. I wish if I had a means to combine things in a in a more opaque container. Technically, I could just use a pint glass for the big part and shake it that way. That might be a good idea. Because that way, because I have this problem of like mixing things in the glass and nobody gets to see what's on the inside before I actually mix it. So actually, I don't wanna, mm, mm. You already put it in there. I already put it in there. Anna brings up a good point. So I'll wait until later. Um, I don't need to wait more, waste more dishes. That's what she says, that's what she says. But the next ingredient we have is going to be Brandy, I got brandy. Brandy is a friend. It's the same brandy I've had previously. Oh, here's a, oh, here's a, whoa, here's some Wisconsin names. Wait, I've got, oh, look in chat. You got one over there. Oh God. Oh, uh, let's see, I'm gonna sound it out first. Oconomowoc, Oconomowoc. I'm gonna guess Oconomowoc for that wait, first wait. one. Let me do the second one. Ashwabanon. <laughs> Ashwell, Ash Ashwabanon. Ashwabanon, that's my next one. Okay. Number three, Wakasha. Wakasha, I'm guessing Wakasha. Wait, I'll get the fourth one. Okay. Wawatsa? Wawatsa? Wawatosa. Going Wawatosa for the next one. <laughs> and while the results are being judged in the background up in the state of Wisconsin, I'm gonna add some brandy to my drink and hopefully if I get things right, this will be my reward. If I don't get things right, I guess this will be my penance. One ounce the cocktail shaker of brandy, whatever you have. I have ENJ. It tastes pretty good. Four out of five. Wait, there are, there are four. 45? Wait a minute. What? Whoa, hold on. I just spilled my brandy. I was so good. Four out of five. Oh, I forgot to pronounce XD. That's my guess. <laughs> I love that. I'm so confused. Three out of four. I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, they say five out of four people don't understand how mixed numbers work. Stop doing that! <laughs> it's funny, it's a math joke, it's a math joke. Four out of five. See, you can't have four out of five people because the sample size is four. Anyway, math math jokes aside. Calcul me. That's not a, wait, four out of five is- Five out of four. Yeah, you said four out of five. Oh, did I accidentally screw up my own joke? Yes, you did. Guess I have to chug an entire raw egg. Don't no, just kidding. We don't like salmonella around here. That's silly and stupid and foolish. Although I have done it before, would I do it again? Context is important here. So what I have in my cocktail shaker is an entire egg, two ounces or 60 milliliters of port wine, and then one ounce or Kesha. 30 milliliters of, oh my God, brandy. Anna, you say things and it throws me off. Wakesha. You pronounced it like 
Kesha as in like the artist Kesha. I mean, to be fair, Ma Kesha. That's the that's the closest comparison I have. The closest association that I have for that spelling is Kesha, as in Ke dollar sign ha. Huh. Which, by the way, I love her songs. I think the Your Love, Your Love, Your Love is My Drug is a great one. The uh, D I N O S A You Are a Dinosaur. You're just an old man. Hitting on me what? You need a cat scan. <laughs> I like how you shrunk down so no one could see you. So nobody could see my shame. We need to dry shake this first, so let's actually shake to the theme of a Kesha song. Um, oh my god, I'm blanking. What's, What's a good one? one? What's that? What's the boots one? What's the boots one? No. Boots? Boots? Nothing but your boots. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't have to sing that one. Let's do your love, your love, your love is my drug. Your love, your love, your love. Do, do, do. Do, do. Your love, your love, your love is my drug. Da 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 da. Wa ke sha. Ke sha. Wa 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 ke sha. I think wa ke sha. Cause wa would be w w. I'll take that. I like that. I spit a little bit of um egg mixture on myself, unfortunately. Wa ke sha. Wa ke sha. Wa ke sha. Wa ke sha. No, but that's Kesha. That's too close okay. to before. Letters have no longer become words. I'm words sure. words can be confusing to at least one person in this room. And that's me, in this case. Okay, so now that we've dry-shaked things, meaning I didn't add any ice to it, it gives the it gives the whole concoction a little time to like froth up a little bit. Maybe you can see that. At least see that without burning over. There we go. It's a little frothy in there. And in case it wasn't perfectly... Actually, wait. If I put it a little closer, the light will adjust. Frothy! Frothy? Frothy, dude! It's frothy in that cup. I dig that. A lot of Wisconsin city names have Native American roots. Dude, I dig that. You know, actually, in New Jersey, not that I remember too much of my history, but I think it was the Lene Lenape are the ones who uh, named most of the areas. And I wish I could name at least one area in New Jersey off the top of my head that definitely has, like, that Native American vibe to it. But I can't for some reason. Quinnipiac comes to mind, but I don't think that was in New Jersey, to be perfectly honest. I'm, I'm not good at remembering things when I'm not trying my hardest here. But what I do remember, they're gonna add ice to my shaker, so that's what I'm gonna do. I got one big cube, dropping my cube, and not actually drop it, but like kind of like slide it on in there. Yeah, just so I don't make a mess, Cameron. That'd be a really, really great idea if you can handle that. Thanks, dude. Thanks, Cameron. Thanks for being real cool about that. And let me put a couple of small cubes in there as well to really get things going. Now, now it's wet shake. Get things all nice to know each other and break up anything that I wasn't able to do before with my tiny disc. Alright, I have one strainer, I have two strainers I'm supposed to, two strainers, and now I just need a glass to put it in. And the question is, which glass? Which glass indeed, which glass? I'm gonna go with this guy in the back over here. I haven't used this guy in a little while. Excuse me, it's just a small thing. Yo, welcome to the party there, Sims Jeff! What we do for people who, quote, come to the party is we put on party hats. Although for some reason, I completely forgot to grab my party hat bin this time. So instead what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little cocktail umbrella in my hair and wear that for the rest of the stream because I don't have the party hat, unfortunately. Oh my God, there's like two. Oh my God, it's like a multicolored Turn thing. To Turn to my left. Turn to my left. Oh my God, wait a minute. My fiance just reminded me that there is always one party hat over here and it is sitting on top of... Oh shit! Okay, so, context key. I do have a Wii. That was the Wii motion bar that just fell behind the television. It was being held up by this little doll of Anna from Disney's Frozen. But it had a party hat on it. So this one's for you, sir! You just threw Anna! I did just throw Anna on the couch. Let's take that. To you, sir and or madam, this is your party hat for you. Thank you for the follow and welcome to the party. In any case, now we got our... As Anna puts it, aka a quote from Adam from a, an anime called Skate the Infinity, bitches, bros, and non-binary hoes, which is a phrase that I totally vibe with in this particular climate of the world right now. Love that shit. All right, where's my, where's my, there we go. There's my controller. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. A cocktail glass. We get a little zoom in action here. It's not perfect. It's not pretty. I guess it is kind of pretty in a way. In any case, Cocktail glass, cocktail shaker, one strain, two strain, we all strain for strain strain. Let's see how this looks. Supposedly, it's actually gonna look like coffee, although I don't, I don't know, haven't made this drink yet. Could be wrong, 
Could be lying to me. I'm not exactly sure. So let's give it a try. All right. Co coffee cocktail. It's got an egg. It's got pork. And it's got... Oh, the other one. Brandy. Honest. Not too bad. I didn't, I didn't think I needed to add any ice to this thing. I'm glad that I didn't. Now, because it's got some egg white in it, or it's got egg, it's got egg in it, it's not just egg white, there's probably gonna be a little foam that develops up on top if we let it sit there for a little bit. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let it sit there for a little bit as I figure out the, the garnish of this. The garnish in this case calls for some grated nutmeg. So what I'll do is I'll grab some nutmeg and I will grate it. I just need my grater, my grady grady grater. Now I do actually have pre-grated nutmeg, which we could use if you really wanted to, don't really want to. I have fresh nutmeg. I mean, it's also in a bottle, but it's nutmeg nonetheless. That's what I'll do. I think I have a pre... I thought I had a pre-grated nut in here. I thought I did. I'll just go with this one. That's a nice smelly nut. I'm cool with that one. I like that nut. Anyway, I'm gonna take that nut. I'm gonna grate it over the top of my cocktail. Context, please. <laughs> Context. But so, that's what I'm gonna do. I, well, I'll zoom it out a little bit, I guess, for it. There we go. Let's see the actual grating of the nutmeg. The grating of the nutmeg nut, interestingly enough. How do we grate nutmeg? I don't know. It doesn't really require an explanation. Here's grate. Grate. Nutmeg. Just like... Eee, there we go. And that's it. That's grated nutmeg. It smells... Oh my god, it smells like sap from a tree. It's great. I don't know what... It, I, like, I don't know where... The origins of certain spices in the world intrigues me. Like... Like, where do, where do, where do nutmeg come from? Does it come from nut of, does it come from tree? Is it fruit? I don't know. What about chive? What even is chive? What is, what is cinnamon? Cinnamon, I think, is a bark of a tree. Like, who, who, once upon a time, decided to go up to a cinnamon tree and was like, scrapes it with a knife and was like, hmm, I'd put that in my tea. But, um. I guess probably the Native Americans were definitely some people. The indigenous peoples in general, the people who came way before us, who have all the, they should have all the credit of all that stuff. I wonder, if I were more of a history buff, perhaps I would be interested in pursuing that information further. But alas, I don't. I'm not a very big history guy. Anyway, so this is the coffee cocktail. Looks, looks pretty good. I like that. That's not that bad looking. Now, of course, as with anything, I'm gonna take a quick picture of this for my own reference. It looks really, really cool. It kind of, actually, actually, let's zoom back in for a moment. It kind of does have that kind of froth on top. I don't know if the camera is going to properly adjust its contrast and whatnot, the brightness to be able to see that. You can kind of see that right at the top. It's beautiful. It's got a negative. Nice. Try to get my finger into the camera properly. If I had a quicker zoom, I would use it. But that's all I got. That's all I have for now. I'm going to take a quick picture of this for my own reference. It goes on Instagram. We have a cocktail Instagram. If you're into that sort of stuff, then you're more than welcome to follow. If you don't want to, honestly, there should be nothing in this world pressuring you to do so. You can make your own decision because you are a valid person and you have every right to choose for yourself. Now, if I could convince myself that same thing, I am rather young and naive, then maybe I'd be a little bit farther along in my life. But we'll just let the years, we'll let the years figure that out for me. Maybe I'll figure it out one day. I'm not really sure. In any case, ladies, gentlemen, those who fall in between or beyond, this is Coffee Cocktail on Cocktail Wednesday. Bar for the next, the extra silent. I apologize for that, it's very confusing. And it smells, like nutmeg. This thing forefront smells like the, the the nutmeg, and then it smells like the egg. I think it's it's like it's actually it's not quite the egg either. It smells kind of like what I imagine the port wine and the egg to smell like together. Which is not something that like if I were to pick this like from totally ran totally random i would not say oh that smells like port wine and egg mixed together but knowing that there's port wine and egg in here the smell that i'm getting reminds me a lot of what i imagine the smell to be like so i guess that's kind of if i try to break that down a little bit it's the nutmeg and like 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 almost a creamy creamy berry like berries and cream almost like not not quite like yogurt berries and cream i imagine like whipped cream that's had blackberries sitting in it, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. I've never actually tried that before, so I don't have a really good reference on it. But what does it taste like? Interesting. Alright. That's not bad at all, actually. That, to me, 
It doesn't taste like coffee. I will be completely forefront. This does not taste like coffee. In my opinion, it kind of looks more like an iced latte that somebody decided to let it sit for a while outside of Starbucks. Not coffee, not dark coffee, not the way that I drink my coffee, not even the way that I make my coffee's lattes. It's not like that. But I mean, to the untrained eye, one could say, oh, there's probably coffee in there, to which you would be wrong. I can actually say that with absolute certainty this time. You're wrong. But it tastes like, it tastes like a very, very mellowed down, uh, like fruit. It's like, it's the, it's the port wine with the spirit forwardness of the brandy kicking on in there. The nutmeg really doesn't do too much for the flavor for me. It's like a little, it's like a little bit of a, like a, like a barky woodsy type thing on my tongue. But aside from that, it's not really doing much for me. It's got an excellent texture because of the egg, the egg that's in there. The egg usually gives like a sort of like smoothness to it if you do it correctly. Oh, you know, speaking of which, it said in the book that if I concoct it correctly, it'll look like coffee. So either I don't know what coffee looks like or I didn't concoct it correctly. Either way, I believe it. But it tastes pretty good though. It imagines though, I've had I've had cocktails that had actual egg yolk in it before and it's got that flavor there. I don't exactly know how to describe it. It's not quite, it's a little dry, it's a little drying. I will say that it's dry. And it's got like um, a weirdness to it. It does have a sweetness. It's got the taste of like fermented fruit, which I know sounds like a really obvious thing there, but like oftentimes like when I have like fruit-based liqueurs or fruit-based like wines and whatnot, it actually tastes like the fruit. It doesn't taste like the fermented fruit. This tastes like the fermented fruit. And I don't know if that's because of the egg and whatnot mixing together or if there's something going on with the brandy in there, which I know is also supposedly fruit-based too, but I don't really get much of that sweetness. I will say, on the sweetness factor, it's not that sweet. It's rather dry. It's not bitter. It's not tart. It's not sour or anything like that. It's like, it's the way that I imagine cream would taste if it didn't have a lot of sugar. No, you know what? It's creamy in the sense that it actually kind of tastes like cream. Because I was trying to think, cream to me is usually a little bit more sweet. This is not sweet. And cream is actually not sweet to me. I don't know why I said that. I lied. It's quite the opposite. It's good. I like that. If you're into, if you're into something that is very, very lightly fragrantly fruity, this is good. This is very good. This is actually very pleasant to drink. I would imagine that this would go very, very well. Actually, warm. I wonder if you could serve this warm. I don't know why you'd want to. You know, kind of eggnoggy. I'll give it the eggnog. Going back to the original egg coffee nog. It is definitely egg. It is not coffee, but it is a little noggy. It's got a little bit of a noggin to it. I could take that. I take that well. In any case, that's the thoughts. That's what I've got here. It's it's excellent. And um, just to recap the recipe for y'all, it was made with, um, trying to think off the top of my head, and a single egg, like literally an entire egg. Just crack that sucker and put it into a cocktail shaker. Two ounces or 60 milliliters of port wine, whatever you've got. One ounce or 30 milliliters of brandy, whatever you've got there too. Dry shake that. Wet shake that, double strain that, and then put some grated nutmeg on it. And that's that's what we got here. It's pleasant, it's smooth, it's a little, little spicy in a way, in the, in the sense that nutmeg is a spice, technically. And it's smooth, and it's pleasant. And it's not usually something that I would go out looking for, I would think, but if somebody, po if somebody popped this right in front of me, it was like, this is gonna be a little bit different. I would agree, it does be a little bit different. I would wonder how this would taste with other, like, with a little bit of bitterness to it. I wonder if you made a riff on this recipe with something a little more bitter, but that's not something that I'm gonna explore right now. I'm looking way too forward to the game that comes after this. I'll admit, I usually try not to talk too much about the game during the cocktail segments, but I'm really looking forward to playing some Paper Mario in the Thousand Year Door. I, that is like a game from my childhood. I'm like, oh, I'm really excited about it. So in any case, unless anybody has any more related cocktail questions, I'm gonna end this session of the stream and take things to the other side of the bar, to the game side, where we're gonna play a little bit of GameCube gaming. Aside from that, thank you everybody for coming along. It's been an absolute pleasure. More Than Awesome is here with a quick comment. I assume that's a Porto flip. It's really quirky, even for More Than Awesome. And they love a Trinidad Sour, which is mostly the Angostura bitters. Dude, I've had me at, um, an Angostura bitters cocktail before. That thing, that's wild when you put more than an ounce in a cocktail glass. It's not a por it's a, what would a porto, I don't know what goes in a porto flip. It's got, it's got, it's got the, whoa, what did I say? Uh, the port, the brandy, and an egg. If that's porto flip territory, I'll take it. I'll have to, I can write that down. I have a little, oh, I don't have my pen on me. 
That's unfortunate. My, 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 that's embarrassing. In any case, thank you everybody so much for coming along. We can talk more about the drink on the other side as I'm sure I'll be enjoying it for the rest of the stream. To everybody else who's out there who may not be sticking around, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening or day, if, no matter what time zone it is for you. And aside from that, party on everybody. Stay happy, be healthy, and so I hope it is enjoyable for all of y'all. Oh good, also need more gin. I also need more gin. I've completely run out. But more on that in a little bit. Thanks everybody so much. Thanks. I can't speak. Thanks everybody so much for coming along. I'll see you on the other side. If not, see you next time. Bye everybody. My goodness. Let me go put it on another party hat for that one. I like the color red. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful occasion for celebration, my friends. Thank you. Ella. The thousand year door. This is it. It's the game. I, if I if I didn't say the game already, this is the game. This is the one. It's Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. Hey dear, what's up? What's that, dear? I got plenty of heads.